So, douches, back with another vid. Whatever the hell this is, this is wrestling stuff. This might be important. The NBA deadline is something concluded already, and I just want to go over most of the trades that occurred. It's been a while since I've been making videos and shit. Like Raw is obviously come out. Soon the SmackDown, because that's earlier in the afternoon. Later in the afternoon, so that's going to be recorded right after I already got Raw package for Wednesday. So, I'm going to tell you what happened. Tobias Harris is in the 76ers. Now, if you people are aware that this is a bit late, the Mavericks have acquired now Tim Hardaway, Trey, <coughs> Trey Burke, Trey Burke, Zach Randolph, Justin Jackson, and Kristaps Porzingis. Kristoff Porzingis. Now, and now Zach Randolph, sure, it's okay. He's barely played a game for the Kings. Justin Jackson's an alright outside shooter. He needs work off his jumper. Trey Burke has obviously had some good improving games. He's shown that he's a great playmaker with the Knicks. And Tim Hardaway has literally been the top scorer for the Knicks since Porzingis has been out. Plus, you package in Porzingis for uh, just a future draft pick that it's rare if they could even get the top three to get Zion. And the only good accumulative players that they got was Wesley, uh, DeAndre Jordan, that's been the best player on the Mavericks. And Dennis Smith Jr. So that's pretty much it. That puts the top draft pick to pace. Uh, the, uh, Brings the top draft pick story away just like it did for Markel Fultz. That's now part of the Magics. Because the Magic haven't gotten a good point guard since Alfred Payton. And he also had work. He needed work with his shot. He can barely shoot. And he's a eh, passer. He's been in Orla uh, New Orleans for the past. For the season so far. and eh, He's there. Sometimes he's been injured. But he's not been the most effective player on the. <clears throat> The uh, Pelicans, and you can tell that he has not been that impressive on the Pelicans, still looking on the record. They have a lack of a paint defense, and as much as Anthony Davis and Julius Randle, watching the Pelicans is like watching the can watching a cancer arise. And this is the Pelicans that blew out the Trailblazers, off the Trailblazers having too much confidence on themselves, and knowing that they have not the best team, and they rely too much on their backcourt to actually do anything. And now we are now. Seeing that completely go to waste, while the Lakers only got Reggie Bullock from the Detroit frickin' Pistons that are even struggling to acquire the 8th seed that are, I think, on Miami Heat. I think we're back at the ninth, but whatever, it's a dogfight in the East. It's literally the best competitive part of the NBA, because it used to be the Western Conference. And fair belief makes everything subjective in the NBA, even who the best player in NBA history is. LeBron is Jordan, even though it's all subjective. Don't care. It's been all right. Side note, did you hear about Kareem Hunt going to the Browns? Other than that, let's go back to some NBA news. So Tobias Harris will literally been gone. I'm sick of these top players signed for role players that are actually reliable and do more than just a top guy. Because Tobias Harris, other than uh, the Clippers being not the best organization, they're obviously filling for the future for future Free agents, as much as Kevin Durant and blah 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 are, dude, nothing's just wrong with their with their team. You had Avery Bradley, you had you had reasonable role players. You had Lou Williams that was packing up 20, 30 points sometimes. You have Tobias Harris that's a literal good player with Bobianovich. Uh, <clears throat> you have good role players, even though you signed Marcin Gortat. He's a decent rebounder. They had good players. I'm shocked that they got rid of him. The Cavaliers got rid of Rodney Hood. He's at the Trailblazers. While they picked up Brandon Knight from the Houston Rockets and Marquise Chris from the Phoenix Suns. I mean, from the Houston Rockets. He used to be part of the Phoenix Suns. The Rockets, they, they only got Kenneth Fareed and <clears throat> Austin Rivers over the course of the season. Now, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to just select a team, and we're going to see what they have required recently. So, first, we're going to go through the Atlanta Hawks and see what they did. 
They've waived Jeremy Lin. Yeah, I find he had a, a subjective season. He wasn't injured, but he hasn't been producing as well as we thought is supposed to be a backup for Trey Young. So he's been waived, and recently he's been bought out and, and signed to the Raptors. So nothing screams better than two guards over 30. They've already got rid of Jabari Bird, Hamilton, and Shelvin Mack after acquiring them. So it's kind of, kind of bad. I don't know what they're going to do with them. They might just go off to G League. Something about this Atlanta Hawks team, I know they're filling up for the future, and they're trying to look for that top guy to build around. Because Hootenier, they have Trey Young, John Collins, that's building up to be one of the best players up in the Atlanta Hawks team. So, yeah, I'll see what they could do. Sooner than later, I hope they actually get some great players, because I have faith in Trey Young. A bit, even though there's some flaw in his game. For the Celtics, they they registered this. Okay, I know this is paper. The Celtics didn't do much, and I think they just re-signed Jalen Brown for a lot of money. Anything else? They just re-signed Marcus Smart. That was the most really recent thing they did. Anything else? They've been just getting rid of some role players. Not that much. Celtics also receive a draft pick off of consideration of the Hawks. So I think the Browns are just uh, the Celtics are just confident on the squad they got. So obviously I'm not that convinced on the Celtics because they're playing all right basketball even on clutch situations. They don't know who to give the ball to. It's an inexperienced team with you know some great ro uh, great top players that are experienced in the NBA from Gordon Hayward, Kyrie Irving, and and Al Horford. And Marcus Smart. There shouldn't be that much to be an issue. This was supposed to be a competitive team. That was supposed to be built up by the Raptors. Since they got Kawhi Leonard. And the 76ers that now acquired Tobias Harris. Then They already got a good team when they signed Jimmy Butler off that deal that they made. And now you get freaking Tobias Harris. It feels like this is just desperation for success. All because you have four good players on the starting lineup and not that much depth after getting rid of Dario Sarvage, uh, Dario Sarvage, Robert Covington to the Timberwolves, and now you think that it's going to make your team good? Come on. It's supposed to be something better. Next is the Brooklyn Nets. They've just waived Greg Monroe because he was trash after signing him to Toronto and barely acquired even five rebounds. Rarely at the fact, he's barely that effective on... On the death roll, thinks he's like a second man, a second hand man. Thank God they resigned Spencer Dinwiddie. He's a great player. They sat, they sadly gave away Kenneth Reed to the Houston Rockets. I thought he was, I thought he was gonna do a lot more, but yeah, he'll be okay if he keeps his defense up. Somehow the Rockets are notable for having play, big men with dreadlocks. For the Charlotte Hornets, all they did was claim Shelvin Mack off of the waivers and smack uh, fucking Zach Smith. Literally, the only thing keeping them alive is literally Kemba Walker. I'm I'm trying to keep it brief, man, because you know teams that are willing to actually sign things, no players that actually have confidence on the basketball teams that they signed for money to multi million dollar contracts that you know should you know. Give them set and give them confidence on their own organization they signed with, been drafted to, or at least had a trade. They'll just ask for a trade. They'll just get a trade. They'll they'll bitch about getting a trade. There's like no pride anymore. Obviously, there's pride in the players, but no pride on your own actual organization. Thanks, the Pelicans screwed up. The Knicks are screwing up. And whatever the hell they got, as much as they think Dennis Smith is going to produce, there's not that much into Dennis Smith other than his athleticism that shows that he's going to be a premier talent. And Ennis Kenter. But other than that, pff, only people sw getting players left and right are goddamn the Bulls and the Cavs. And let's go into the Bulls real quick. The Bulls have just got rid 
of Carmelo Anthony and whoever Timothy Lou uh they just and got uh, Timothy Luau Cabert and they traded for uh Otto Porter for Bobby Portis and Jabari Parker. He's been an all right score. I think he's been the sec the secondary scorer after the debacle that been the Wizards season. After, you know, they had all the premier players and still John Wall and Bradley Beal in the backcourt. And now Bradley Beal is an all-star while John Wall got an extension off his injury after an accident at home. And now you got rid of a good a good uh athletic scorer out of out of Porter. And next we might see Dwight Howard join the damn Suns. I don't care what happened to the Wizards. They shot themselves in the foot. Just, wow. Uh, no pride on John Wall's part. First coming into the NBA the season with poor conditioning. He looked bloated. He He's just absolutely trash this year. And, and it speaks for itself how bad the Wizards organization is t telling it. And people have been saying all these years either to trade Waller or trade Beal. I would just say trade Wall. Trade Wall, uh, obviously, because even though he's a multi-all-star, he's been known to be the best defensive point guard in the NBA. He's not been the most overlooking. He's never been in the top five. And obviously, he doesn't care. So if he just gets traded, or at least if he wants to stay another year, he has to pick himself up. Because just losing out of Porter, then Austin Rivers, and all these other players, it's not proven to be impressive. Why would Melo also come to Chicago? They just get bought out. Because he's a shitty player. Now I'm about to say this real quick. I had a rant video about this months ago. Talking about Carmelo Anthony being a selfish piece of crap. And he doesn't deserve to be in the NBA. I don't know why people think he's to go. At all because he was a top scorer back before he was 25. And all this overlooking shit. All because of what he did for the Knicks organization. To just get him to two playoff. Playoff, uh, <clears throat> playoff appearances. It, it it's not impressive it's as much as yes, Melo did some cool stuff back in the day. He's been never known to be a classified winner, do anything for an organization, or stay there for quite long because he's a selfish piece of shit and he's willing to build stuff for, for himself and for the team or the fans. That's literally Carmelo Anthony. I'm shocked people don't like it. And people that are fans of Carmelo Anthony just get the shoe, don't get the shoes, they don't like the jerseys, they don't like, they don't want to mimic Carmelo Anthony. Nobody wants to mimic Carmelo Anthony because they know it's a weak ass ability that he has on the court. It doesn't make a team look better, even if the team's winning by twenty. Same thing as what he did in the Thunder. Now we have the Cavaliers in display, and now they signed Nick Stauskas, Marquise Chris. Uh, Brandon Knight, they bought out Patrick McCaw, they got Wade Baldwin, all this crap. And what did they do? Still in a weak-ass way, you know, being crap. They're, they're trash, can't shoot. Alan Sexton is literally the only positive going out of this. They lost Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love. There's no way for the Cavaliers to build themselves after shooting themselves in the foot. The organization is too full of shit to actually fix themselves and actually think that they're going to, you know, have a top pick in the NBA draft. But they do. They do. They did trade it. Dwayne Wade for a draft pick. And I don't know how in the hell they're going to go development with all these mismatched teams they got players they have. Hell, they might sign Gordon Hayward. This is not the most impressive Cavalier season, obviously, after losing LeBron James. Nothing has been. I hope Colin Sexton becomes good. Anything else? These are just desperation signings to just fill up positions. With the bench. Lack thereof. Just Jordan Clarkson. Colin Sexton. So, the Mavs kind of won that Knicks trade. As much as I don't want to say it, they did. And fascination of me, even though I'm 
I'm not the big fan of the Knicks. Normally support the Nets more. Yeah, you gotta feel sympathy for such a storied organization that hasn't made the NBA Finals since 1999 and just keep getting rid of potentially great players or losing them in the fact of just it's not a losing a lot of developing more players. Like how the hell you get Stefan Marbury and he becomes a Hall of Famer in China. Or just wow. It's just bad. And now you lose Porzingis, a guy that likes the fan base, but the organization is crappy, completely weak, doesn't know what they're doing, complete looks full of itself and doesn't take their top star that they have in the palm of their hand. Seriously, and now two, two of the best Euro players that look like they have no flaw in their game are matching up together with some reasonable depth. They have J.J. Borea now, Trey Burke, and Marciani. I don't think he gets more minutes, though. <clears throat> Trey Burke and Tim Hardaway Jr. and Courtney Lee that are pretty good players. Oh, the Mavericks do in the future make the postseason? It's been a while, though. I think it's been since 2014. Next up are the Denver Nuggets. And they didn't do much. I mean, they waived Nick Young after signing him for the rest of the season. That was literally the most talked about thing over the near the middle of the season. It was like, oh, Nick Young, after this dumb crap he did, he's not getting signed to another team. Until the Nuggets signed him, and he only played like one game. I think he, aver he only put like 18 points up, and he left after getting waved up. Um, the Nuggets dogfight for first seed in the West. They're having a tremendous season. One of the best offensive teams in the league. Leosa Nurkic. People are obviously upset about uh, Jamal Murray not being an all-star, but eh, he's he's going to be fine. If you, if you make the playoffs, hell, if you make the Western Conference Finals, I think that's a sole achievement. We haven't seen the Nuggets there in years, since like 2009 or 2008. Whatever. It, it's still going to be really fun. The Nuggets are like one of the funner teams to watch. They have some great athletic pieces. Yosef Nurkic is the best player I've, I've been seeing. Better than Carl Anthony Towns, in my opinion. And as much as uh, I people obviously think, yeah, NBA season's over. You picked up Cousins. You have to rent your Draymond Green. Yeah, they, they've been playing better, but that lack of depth can kill the Warriors if they're in a consistent seven-game series. So, I hope uh, something happens in the NBA Finals for the Nuggets. Something optimistic happens because they haven't done anything since December 30th, and it is now February 12th. Next up is the Detroit Pistons, and the biggest things the Pistons did was sign Wayne Ellington after and Fawn Maker after. Jesus, they got Thon Maker? I didn't know that. But but still, other stuff. They got rid of Reggie Bullock to sign some Euro fag that, abs that accidentally tapped up LeBron James after his injury. But whatever. He's up for the war. He's in the Pistons lineup. You have a good outside shooter out of Wayne Ellington. And you got a decent 3 and D baller out of uh, <clears throat> Thon Maker. I don't think he can block anymore. Von Maker, he ain't that bad, but I hope he, you know, picks up some steam in the Pistons that obviously need some role players, but they got some well-known role players now out of Wayne Ellington and Von Maker. His name is Save Malaket. Whatever his name is. It's literally it for the Pistons. They're, they're all right. If they can survive up for... Eighth seed, it seems possible after Miami Heat's inconsistency. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind seeing the Pistons in another playoff series after Blake Griffin's having an all-star season. Yo, I hope you guys enjoy all-star break. And it's coming up really, really, really close. Hope you guys are getting ready for all-star break. Buy a jersey. I hope you voted. Your votes did not count. Or did. I wanted D. Rose to make it. As much as I like to, uh, Dwayne Wade, because it's the last dance, and obviously he deserves one more All-Star appearance. 
it, it sucks to see D Rose not make it. Warriors. I mean, from all the role players, do you really need it after having starting five like that? Cousins is back from injury after, I think, an Achilles tear. Your most notable, uh, you know, players are fucking Giannis Jerubko, Kevin Looney, and Jordan Bell. You still have Durant, Cousins. It's possible to get Durant and Cousins because definitely Durant. He only reached out to like over 50 mil and <clears throat> DeMarcus Cousins only took 5 million of a contract. It's kind of effed up. And I'm sure nobody's utilizing a trade for this if the Warriors are willing to actually compete with reasonable players and just Cousins and Durant. <clears throat> sure, you still got the three point man out of. Curry and Thompson and Draymond still there causing problems off the D, but he, these guys can't play all 42 minutes. They still need some good role players. And other than Stevenson, the Igu, Dalla, Looney, and a lot of other role players, none of these guys can hold a candle to these guys. So, Warriors, uh, they're still going to win the NBA Finals. And what am I talking about? Next is the Houston Rockets that, okay, if Harden was playing on Hall of Fame levels of offense and the entire other NBA when playing in rookie defense, that's literally how the Rockets season is going. All they did was get Kenneth Reed, Stauskas, they got Stauskas and Baldwin, and freaking Iman Shumpert over the season. They also signed fucking Austin Rivers. That I didn't suspect them to do because they already got Mike, uh, Mike, uh, Carl Anthony Town. No. What am I talking about? <clears throat> but whatever, they still got, um, Michael Carter Williams. So I was like, why you got the same guy? You got a light skin that pales in comparison to other starters. Rockets, I can see them maybe making it to six seed, but I don't see them making it to the first round unless Harden. Goes off where he plays regular season mode all the time. And our nose plays like his regular season mode. That's kind of a flaw to his game. Where he thinks all because you can show it and give the fans a bit of fun. Even though you're supposed to be, you know, playing some reasonable defense. Keep it physical. That Harden has been. He's been improving mainly defensively. Chris Paul is still there. Still got a great play out of Clint Capella that's been injured for a bit. For quite a while now. And you got some. And Gerald Green has been still one of the better role players. Next to Austin Rivers, that's been playing crappy because he's not a starter anymore. Next up is the Pacers, and I'm kind of angry. Good for D'Angelo Russell. He's finally an all-star, but it had to come to a cost to a great shining star out of Victor Oladipo. Pacers still have an opportunity. They're still like the third team in the East. They're, un they're incredible. Incredible development. They have great players. They still have Miles Turner, Shabonis. They still got great players out of Obanovich. And Darren Collison, Corey Joseph. Unbelievable players. They still got some great players out there. And they can handle the ball whenever they want. And Miles Turner developing a three point shot. It's scary as hell. And I hope these guys actually make it still into the playoffs because I want to see some Pacers basketball. But Without Victor Oladipo as the top dude to handle the ball, the hell are they going to do? I have no idea, but I can't wait to see. Rough to see Victor Oladipo not making it to an all-star appearance. But it's going to be fun to see Russell. He's been having a breakout season. Next is the Clippers. They just waved Michael Beasley after Lakers shit went badly. Because with a guy that looks like he plays mainly East Coast style basketball, it's not going to work that well. After trading away half your, uh, half your good players for fucking Mike Muscala. What? And that's pretty much it. Got Wilson Chandler. 
Iguodala. You got rid of Michael Beasley. The Clippers are literally trying to, you know, no, not that much out of Shea Gilligas Alexander. And after after getting rid of Marcinger Top, not that much into the Clippers, really. After trading away all your players. Next up. I am getting tired. Miami Heat didn't do that much. Lakers literally traded away for one role player. Milwaukee Bucks doing absolutely fine after getting rid of Thon Maker. Anza Takumbo still raping the league. Timberwolves. Butler's gone. Get fucked. Pelicans get fucked. Knicks, you're fucked for life unless you have a good draft pick. OKC, keep it going. I don't think they got much. I think they even had Corey Brewer for a bit. Corey Brewer been a journeyman this season. I think he signed with three teams in one year. Good for him. Next up, the Orlando Magic. Good luck with Markel Fultz in his would it, won't it shot. That's default on his on his my player. 76ers gonna make it to the conference final if, if it's possible, unless Embiid can you know, stop talking shit and actually play a real game of basketball. Phoenix Suns. Kelly Rupert is good. Evan Booker is good. We're all good, except the Suns, the organization. They never signed a big player once. In the, in the entire NBA season. They never even signed a previous All-Star. They never signed a previous All-Star. Why couldn't you sign an All-Star? Or a previous All-Star? You got Devin Booker. He won a three-point contest like two years ago. I mean, last year. That's pretty much it. Trailblazers. You got Ronnie Hood. You're fucked. I'm joking. He, he's alright, but he's not the best player. I like Nurkic. I don't mind Seth Curry. I think he's producing decently. You know he's not the best since his time in Dallas. And McCollum are, and Lillard are doing their thing. They gotta do something, man. I hope. Unless they really have some decent players, or at least they change a bit of the way they play. The Blazers will always be the Blazers. They, they always rely on McCollum and Lillard for everything. The Sacramento Kings are having a resurgent season. They're playing really good basketball. I'm liking Fultz and Buddy Held. Other than that, they're not, it's not the most impressive Kings, but it's obviously a turnaround from the Kings' youth and seeing the last few seasons that's been playing crappy basketball and getting blown up by 30. It's a good change of pace, and it's great seeing the Kings play basketball well again. The Spurs are still playing competitive. After the entire uh, Kawhi trade and crap, and they really didn't have to get rid of much because they still got Mills, they still got uh, Patty Mills, they still got Gasol, they still got some great role players. Burnett's is good. Kodal's been an all right as a good defensive of a, of a great anchor to the team, and DeRozan still playing well. People are upset because they didn't make the all his All Star team, even though he's not been the most. Highlight heavy has not been the most notable. I don't like to say highlight because it's not always how you show a player is good. But it's not getting that most watched by the public. I, I, it makes sense for not an all-star. You can't just give it out to everyone. You got to find the top guys. This is NBA. You forgot this is a big NBA. This is a big basketball league. Sure, it's a popularity contest. That's literally basketball. That's NBA. That's what they've been doing for years. So find the guy that gives them the most profit. The most highlights, the most guys to keep them watching so they can watch the NBA, watch the organization, watch the team, and watch the fans. That's literally all stars. I'm shocked that people are angry about this, but you gotta find a reason. People are even upset that Jimmy Butler didn't make all stars, even though he's doing all right. But people are still talking about him beating Simmons, and Simmons made an all star team. You see why? Raptors. Next is the Utah Jazz. First, you guys didn't do much. I mean, the biggest signing you guys ever did was Kyle Korver. You got Jay Crowder. You got all right defenders out of goddamn Derek Faber. Derek Favors, whatever. Dante Exum is shockingly still on your team, and you guys didn't do much. 
I think that they could still make it to the playoffs after a rough slump of an early part of the season, but anything else, I hope Donovan Mitchell matures. The Wizards. I already had a discussion about you guys. Technically, a small little rant into the video. Fix your shit up. Your organization is terrible, and obviously, you should get rid of John Wall if this continues to happen. Controversy shouldn't even involve trannies of some sorts, Dwight. And fire your head coach. That's literally what I got for the middle of the season. Hope you guys enjoy All-Star break soon. See you later.